Hey, Professor David Suckler. Today, I'm going to show you how you could automate your literature review using ChatGPT. But unlike other videos you may have seen, I'm going to show you how to do this in a completely ethical way. And I say this as a professor because I want to make sure that you feel confident. Now, sometimes with these tools, it can feel like cheating. And because in many cases, you are. But I'm going to show you how to do this without plagiarizing and without uh, running afoul of any of the rules of your university or of publishing, wherever you are in your journey as a student, all the way through to being a researcher or a professor like myself. Now, I'm also going to show Show you kind of the right way to do things and how you can supercharge them with AI. I think it's really important that you learn the right way to do things going forward so that you can then augment with these new tools that are available that frankly I wish I would have had when it, when I started where you are. Uh, in Flash Forward Now I've published 400 articles in peer-reviewed journals. I could have done this a lot faster using the tips here. Finally, of course, is YouTube. If you stick around, I'm going to show you a secret tip for your writing that's going to transform the way you think and help you feel really good about your literature review and know what you need to do doing the first pass yourself. So let's dive straight in. We're going to cover the four stages of writing a literature review, starting with defining your research question. Now, you need to at least have a topic in mind. I've got an example here from a student I have been working with who asked, hey, you know, Chris, what's your research question? Uh. I don't know. I'm interested in school improvement plans. Exactly. So many of you might be in that very same place. You need to turn this into a clear question and define boundaries so that you don't get lost. Say, take a topic like, I don't know, uh, feminism. I want to understand feminism. Well, you're going to run in circles and get lost, feel frustrated and confused. You need to connect that to an outcome to study a relationship like the impact of feminism on income inequality. That's going to put boundaries and parameters so that you limit the space of your search so you don't get, get lost. And many of you just want to get this done in, in a pragmatic and reasonable amount of time. So, okay, so school improvement plans. And you can see, even if you just start without that outcome, ChatGPT is going to help you. So it's going to list out, help me find a research question. It's going to list out a series of potential questions, um, such as this one. How effective are school improvement plans in enhancing student academic performance in underperforming schools? That's great. It's immediately uh, really connected the outcome and defined also here the population. Uh, underperforming schools, kind of your your tools that you have available in refining your research question. You can define the population here, U.S. underperforming schools. That's a population outcomes here, student academic performance. Um, what you're looking at, sometimes the intervention or exposure here at school improvement. Uh, I really like this question, and ultimately, working with the student, that's what we went with. But you can see there's also many of other questions that you can look at, and some of these you might want to integrate into your review anyway. So keep them in mind. When you've got this, and you've defined your research question, normally now, you would move to the second stage, which is developing a search strategy to go find literature on this research question. Except with this new breed of tools, we can short circuit that process and we're actually going to go to step three and invert the order and then come back to step two. So step three is we're going to develop an outline and a structure. And instead of conventionally getting the material and developing structure, we're going to use support of the power uh, of ChatGPT to go create a structure and outline for us. We might refine this later, but it's going to be a first start and help focus our search. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so scroll down and let's say, hey, ChatGPT, let's go with the first one. Can you write an outline for a literature review with a structure and potential themes? Ever willing to help, certainly. Uh, it comes up with a structured outline. It's really important that you put a structure and potential themes in your outline. So uh, it gives you a working title, an introduction. I'm going to set up, you need a little place to put your methods. If, if you don't have a method, that's really the search strategy I said in the second step. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and it gives you a, a series of outlines. Section one, an overview, maybe historical context. Section two, uh, really getting to the meat of the article, the effectiveness of these school improvement plans uh, with subsections there. Section three, challenges and limitations. This is great. This is going to save you a ton of time. You can adjust this outline. Say, hey, chat GPT, calibrate this. I need this to be around just a thousand word essay. If you're doing it for a school project, if you're doing this as a paper you want for a peer-reviewed article, maybe you want to say towards a 3,000 word structure, you might want to eliminate some sections. You may even find as you go through, and I'm going to show you an example in a second, that you're going to tweak some of these bullet components of the outline. Uh, so remember, this is not cheating, right? ChatGPT hasn't done the work for you. This is essentially like you've had a conversation with me or another professor to give you a framework, tools, and methods from within which you can roll up your sleeves now 
and do the work. So how are you going to do that? Like I said, next step, you need a search strategy. And the starting point that I recommend, especially if you're doing this for the first time, is to head over to Google Scholar and we're gonna do targeted forensic searches on each of these outline themes. So what we need to do is we're gonna copy and paste this outline, we're gonna bring it over to Word, and then we're going to move to Google Scholar, start searching, and use our strip method, a method we've developed to really help you in your literature review, but uh, while still avoiding plagiarism. Let me show you how. So back here to ChatGPT, and we're just gonna copy all of this and uh, drop it. Let's pull up a Word document. Here we go. We've got, we've got our structure here in our Word document. And now what I'm gonna do is go straight over to Google Scholar. So let me open up a new window, Google Scholar, and let's pop in a school improvement plan, SIP effectiveness in the US. And what you see, we're gonna pull up a bunch of different articles. I found one here that's worth noting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this article and the next thing you need to do, you need to start saving these articles. So if you don't already have it, you need Zotero and you'll see a little connector if you set this up correctly, save to Zotero. So I'm click on save to Zotero, it's gonna ask you which library. Well, hang on, wait a second, I need to create a library. Create a dedicated library for your project. So come in here, Create a new collection, Zotero. By the way, if you're not using Zotero, but you're using ChatGPT, you really need to have a conversation with yourself. You're using advanced tools, but not using the basic ones. It's like you don't even have a cell phone and you're trying to make a phone call and, and you're still using landlines. This is fundamental. You need Zotero. Okay, I digress. So um, back here, Zotero, uh, it's free. I, I'm 100% committed to these free platforms, committed to open access, uh, because I really want to reduce the barriers so that everybody in the world, wherever you are, can do high quality research. So here we go, create, let's just call this SIP. Okay, and Zotero is going to save it, the item right here, click on my library, I'm gonna pick the library, I want it in SIP. Bam, done, it's gonna come back to Zotero, I've got it here. Later on when you get the PDF, you can upload it there. We've got a full video on getting started with Zotero, you need this. Okay, so now that we've got this here, we're gonna avoid the risk of plagiarizing because we're gonna cite everything. I'm not gonna go through the full article, but I'm gonna show you how to use our strip method. So I can already see here several components of this abstract that are relevant. I'm just gonna pluck these bits out and we're gonna move this into our working document here in Word, and you wanna make sure you get the reference here so you avoid any risk of plagiarism. Um, Zotero's gonna do this automatically, but I'm just gonna pop this in here for now. So I've got it here. And if you look in this abstract, you're gonna do this with a key, you're gonna forensically go through your article and pull out key bits, but I can see different points that fit in different sections. So this one here, zooming in, says that the empirical evidence base on school improvement plans is limited. Great, that's not just me saying that, that's somebody who in 2023 said, hey, on this research question, there's limited, limited evidence. So what's that gonna do? That's gonna help focus the purpose of the review to say that there's a gap. And I'm just gonna put this here and drop this and say this is Mariano et al, 2023. And uh, we're gonna rewrite this later. We're gonna rewrite everything later. We're just dropping the evidence in the right place in the outline. Um, same thing here. I can see here, ah, there's even less on the intersection of school equity and planning. Oh, that's really interesting. And tells me, hang on, wait a second. Maybe that's a really important part of this, these studies on academic outcomes. It's gonna be a subsection of academic outcomes. Maybe I'm gonna look at the equity side of it. Maybe it's gonna get its own bullet point. But for now, this equity point here is really important. And I'm gonna drop this Mariano study here to just say, hey, even less literature focuses on this point about equity, um, which is really important. The median student might not reflect underprivileged students, for example. Um, so we'll come back to that. So you're gonna repeat this process on each of these bullet points until you hit saturation. That is, when you go into Google Scholar, you search for more articles, and you're not getting anything new. You've captured it all. There's nothing left to say. And that saturation often will hit when you hit maybe five to 10 articles for each of these bullet points, that's often enough, but it's gonna depend on how mature your field is. So again, this is not unethical because you are doing the research and heavy lifting yourself, but ChatGPT has lowered the barrier, made it a lot faster, enhanced your power as a human uh, to hone in on the value, unique value added that, that you're able to contribute. So that is step three. One other thing I just want to flag for you, I am committed to free tools. There are other tools within which, uh, apart from Google Scholar, that you can search. For example, one of these tools is called Cite, which will search the literature for you. And this can be quite helpful, but it is a paid for tool. For the vast majority of you, Google Scholar is more than good enough, and that's my official recommendation. Uh, there is a place for these tools, but again, in the spirit of open access, like Zotero and Google Scholar, I want to uh, really promote on this channel 
free, publicly available resources that anybody can do this anywhere in the world, no matter what resource you have available to you. So you've gone through, you've harvested your literature, you've popped it into your reference manager, you're ready to go to start writing. The fourth critical step where ChatGPT is gonna help you is on editing, and it's gonna save you a ton of time. But you do need to know our secret formula for writing well. It's gonna make ChatGPT more effective, and it's gonna help you really flesh out this outline fast. We use a peer system that we've developed and adapted, and peer is kind of like a hamburger uh, where each of the elements of peer, P-E-E-R, are kind of like the bun, the meat, and the other bun of the hamburger. P is the point, it's the topic sentence, it's the main point, each paragraph should make one point following our one point rule, and uh, that's usually the first sentence of your paragraph. Then you have the E's, which is kind of like the meat, the cheese, and these are evidence, example, explanation. And finally, the last component is the bun, is the repeating sentence. Well, I'm good to talk about theory. I'm gonna show you, not just tell you how to do this. And in fact, it's one of my pet peeves personally that professors kind of treat students like a banking system. I'm gonna open your mouths, I'm gonna deposit information, keep it and regurgitate it. Uh, I, I, I try to kind of level the playing field and think of us as intellectually curious equals working together to advance the collective body of knowledge research to make an impact like so many of you who follow this channel really want to do with your work. Let me show you, coming back to our outline, how you're gonna do that. So let's take this uh, Mariana point about equity and how could we flesh this out? So uh, my sense, is I'm gonna make something up here, okay, don't make things up, but uh, something that's probably the case based on what they said and how you could flesh this out. So if we're gonna make this into a full-blown paragraph, I would probably start something like this. Despite, uh, you know, a wealth of evidence on the impact of SIPs on academic performance. Much less scholarship exists on its uh, effectiveness for underprivileged or resource-deprived students. Right, that is the point of the paragraph that I'm gonna make. The second, I'm gonna maybe cook this a little bit more using cooking analogy. I really don't wanna drop in raw food. I wanna kinda of develop this a bit more. I'm gonna explain it. I'm gonna say, it is, I'm fleshing out this idea, it is highly likely that um, the uh, effect of SIPs for median or average students um, is different than that on uh, uh, lower income or ethnic minority groups. You know, and then here I'm gonna deploy kind of like dropping in a little nugget of evidence. I'm deploying ammunition. Notice one thing I'm gonna do here, I'm not writing the paragraph to say, Mariano and colleagues in 2023, XXX. It's quite a boring way to write. You'll sometimes see people who are novices that Mariano and colleagues did this. Luigi did this. I'm going with Italians because my colleagues are all Italian. So Mario did this, right? No, you don't want to do that. Make your point and then drop your evidence like to back that point up. So we're going to do this here and say, okay, one study by Maria, or, and it was actually a content analysis, one content analysis by Mariano and colleagues, and we'll cite it 2023, um, reviewed SIPs in uh, tier one US schools, I'm making some things up, you need to go through and get this evidence into the outline, um, um, and found that less than 2% performed an evaluation of effectiveness, and of those, none included an evaluation of uh, equitable effects. Clearly, uh, more research is needed to understand how SIPs impact on vulnerable groups. Okay, something like this, right? So you've got your first draft, and you're gonna do this, use our peer system here, right? Like what, what we've got, the point here, the uh, explanation and the evidence, and the repeating or linking sentence with spelling errors um, here. And then what we're gonna do is, ChatGPT, you can now take this whole section in editing, and this is where you're gonna tap the power in an ethical way of ChatGPT, because you've done the first draft yourself using our peer system, using the outline, um, and drop this back into ChatGPT. We're gonna ask ChatGPT to edit this for us. So I'm gonna say here, um, please edit this paragraph um, that is in the literature review above in an academic tone featuring clear and succinct writing style, okay? And we're just gonna drop this in. Um, you do need to prime GP, chat GPT to let it know what you want it to do. And if we come down here, we're, we're gonna say this is a little bit 
a little bit wordy, but I, I, I like it. There's a, despite this extensive research, so some of this is just wordsmithing, but that's okay. I would be careful. Sometimes it says startlingly low rate. I'm a little bit British in my writing. I like to let the data speak for themselves and not try to embellish or add accents. So some of this is what will turn into a little bit of what I call purple prose, just using more complicated language than is needed. Use simple language when possible. I always encourage my students to try to explain things so that their grandmother can understand. Things like alarmingly, th this tone just isn't right. And this is where GPT goes a little bit off. But you'll see it, it did really little change to the structure. Um, and this can help you save time, especially if English is not your first language. I recommend tools like Grammarly, but ChatGPT here is gonna save you a bunch of time editing. So that's it guys. My student who had failed to do his literature review three times before tapped the power of chat GPT and got this review and school improvement plans done in under a week and in the right way that he could feel proud of. And I feel proud of that he using chat GPT learned faster, mastered the basics, and now has gone from chapter two, which was literature review and already breezing through chapters three, four, and five. It's almost like getting past this first hurdle of the literature review unlocks the floodgates for everything that comes next. It's so often the sticking point that I see for so many students who just get frustrated, don't know what to do, and throw in the towel and give up. Don't let that happen to you. That's exactly what this channel is about. I do believe the future is going to be that AI will surpass our abilities as humans, and we need to learn to coexist and not feel threatened by it, but use ChatGPT in the right way. And we're gonna to continue to deliver content like this on this channel for you, because if you're not using it, you are at a competitive disadvantage compared to your peers. Uh, so uh, again, stay tuned for more comment like this. You've requested it from me, I'm delivering it to you. By the way, uh, do join my Facebook group. If you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and in my Facebook group, we can communicate directly. We have live chats where professors, other research students, and peers are collectively working together as a community of practice to help advance our own research and kind of lift the tide for all boats. Uh, do hope you join, hope to see you there, and I'm gonna look forward to seeing you in the next video.